One of the skills that's often tested on your sucks in the accounting exam is can you interpret the information in the inventory cards? So sometimes they actually just give you an inventory card. You don't even have to fill it in and they kind of want you to be able to interpret it. So to do that, we kind of need to look at this and go, well, all the transactions involving inventory will need to go in the inventory cards, which essentially is just representing the inventory ledger. And that will have debits, which will go on the left hand side. And that will be the things that make inventory go up. So when we buy it for cash or credit, there's a sales return or an inventory gain. And on the credit side or the right hand side, that'll be the things that make inventory go down. So when we sell it for cash or credit, and then we just do opposites. Opposite of a sales return is a purchase return. Opposite of an inventory gain is an inventory loss. And then we have these other things. We've got sometimes the owner takes inventory as drawings. We've got inventory used for advertising. And then we've got this one here, which we haven't dealt with yet, called inventory write down. So we're going to forget about that now, and we'll learn about that one in the next chapter. But basically, if this is our inventory card, all the things that make inventory go up, they should appear in the in column. And all the things that make it go down should appear in the out column. So these are the things that will be ins. These are the things that will be outs. So that's a start. So now we can interpret the inventory card and go, well, if it's in the in column, it made inventory go up. If it's in the out column, it made inventory go down. But then we kind of need to become fluent in reading and interpreting that. So we got a full inventory card there. So there's a lot going on there. What we need to be able to do is with each transaction, just break it down and be able to tell what's what. And the way we're going to be able to do that is just to look at, so first of all, to determine the transaction, we just want to look at, well, what document type does it have? And which column would it appear in? So if we took cash purchases of inventory. So we bought inventory for cash. So we would expect to see some sort of receipt that we got or maybe a check there. And because it's our buying inventory, that would be in the in column. For a credit purchase of inventory, the document would be an invoice. So we can differentiate between cash and credit purchases by looking at the document type. But it will also be in the in column. Sales returns, the document type will be a credit note and it will go in the in column. And an inventory gain, that would be a memo, and it would be in the in column. And the other thing to note is that usually, can't guarantee with 100% certainty, but that should probably be on the last day of the period. That's when we do our inventory count. Now, what we can see is there's all the possible ins, the document types. What about the outs? Well, when we have a cash sale of inventory, we will give the customer a receipt, and it will be in the out column. But when we make a credit sale of inventory, we will give the customer an invoice and it will go in the out column. What about with a purchase return? Well, with the sales return, it was a credit note. Purchase return will be a credit note too, but the opposite will be true. So with a sales return, it came back into the business, whereas with the purchase return, we're sending it back out to the supplier. We've got inventory gain here. Well, the opposite of that is an inventory loss. It will also be a memo, but we'll be able to tell it's different to an inventory gain because that went in the in column. This one will go in the out column, but again, it will probably be on the last day of the period. We've got drawings of inventory that will have a memo in the out column because the business is losing inventory and inventory used for advertising will have a memo and it will go in the out column. Now that's all we need to know for now. I just thought we'd put this in now while we're being thorough, but we won't talk about it after this. Inventory write down will be a memo and it will also be in the out column. So what we now need to do is if I give you a transaction in uh, an inventory card, you need to be able to tell me what that is. And all we do is we just break it down. We go, here's all our possible transactions. So we go, first of all, is it an in or an out? This is an in, so it's not going to be any of these things here. So we go in column receipt. Now the only thing in the in column that could have a receipt would be this one. A cash purchase of inventory could also say check there or maybe BPAY or EFT transfer receipt. Yeah, receipt, in column, cash purchase. All right, we've got here, memo in the out column. Now, it's not going to be any of the ins. Look at the out column memos. It's got to be one of these four here. But we said an inventory loss will probably be on the last day of the period. And we also haven't done inventory write down. So we'll let, let's forget inventory write downs. Inventory loss probably on the last day of the period. So it's not going to be that one because this is on the 8th of April, not the 30th. So that could be either of these two. So both of those answers would be right. So if I gave you that and said, what is that? And you said that's drawings or you said that's inventory used for advertising. Both those answers are correct. This one, invoice in the out column. What do we got? What's well, none of these? Out column invoice. That can only be a credit sale of inventory. That's us making a sale on credit of inventory. C, 
16th of April, credit note in column. So credit notes could be for sales returns or purchase returns. The only, so that's the credit note part. But to look at this, it's in the in column. So that can only be a sales return. Invoice in the in column. So in column. So that's got to be one of these ones. And the only time there'll be an invoice in the in column is when we're buying it on credit. So that is a credit purchase of inventory. 20th of April credit note out column. So we said credit notes are either sales returns or purchase returns, but the sales return will be in the in column. And this one's got to be a purchase return because it's in the out column. We as the business are sending inventory out back to our supplier to get a credit. So that's a purchase return. We've got the 26th of April, a memo in the out column. So out column memo. So we said the, that's got to be one of these four. We haven't done inventory write downs yet, so we'll forget that. Inventory loss will probably be on the last day of the month. So that's, can't be that one. So we'll say that could be either of those two. If you wrote either of those two things, that would be an acceptable answer. 29th of April receipt out column. Receipt in the out column. We're looking at this, the only thing in the out column that's a receipt. That must have been us making a cash sale of inventory, like so. And one more. So we've dealt with pretty much every type of transaction except for on the 30th with a memo out column. So what we'll find is, you know, a memo on the last day of the month probably suggests either an inventory gain or an inventory loss. Technically, that could be drawings or advertising too, but the question will probably say it's not. And it'll say, what is it then? So it's got to be one of those two. But if it's an inventory gain, it would be in the in column, whereas here it's in the out column. So that one's got to be an inventory loss. But if we just flip that around and said, well, same thing, but let's just change one thing and put that in the in column. So same date, same document number. Yeah, that now becomes an inventory gain. So just make sure last day of the period memo, probably going to be an inventory gain or inventory loss. Just check whether it's in the in column or the out column.